morning everybody, welcome back to the Average Artist channel. I am Steph, I'm the Average Artist and I am making a horror comic and if you don't know or haven't seen this process, basically I'm documenting the whole process from beginning to end, so starting out from just rough concepts to final pages. I will be vlogging it all, so if you want to see those vlogs, we'll start from the beginning. I'm going to put a playlist right here in the corner so you can catch up. And basically where I left it, I was showing you guys the final pages and I'm colouring them and different stuff's happening. I coloured this one on the stream last week. I'm doing Friday morning streams, Friday morning my time, so it's plus one GMT. So if you can join me, let me know. I it's probably start about 11, 12, depending on my awakeness, <laughs> really, to be honest with you. And we did a couple of pages. I think I coloured this one and then after that I did a couple more. So today I've been, basically what I do, I went to the darker room to use the light box and I've been light boxing these pages but some of them, because they literally came from my roughs in my sketchbook. So what I've done is, I've taken these roughs that I've done, so I've done all the pages with this basically tried to like get it as final as, as I could in the sketchbook. What I did is scan them and blew them up and then printed them out and then had some empty spaces or things that weren't really defined so when I get to the next page I have to draw whatever I've left out or fix things to make them look better so when I come to do the lines on the light box they won't look so crappy. So I had to do these panels yesterday but I had already done them, like I had already drawn them really small in my sketchbook so I just had to copy them across because I knew what I wanted them to look like. And that's the rough and then I did the final page which is this one. I didn't vlog this but yesterday I, is it this page? I did a couple of pages. Um, I did this page as well and this bit was all blank. I had left that blank in the rough so I had to do it all over again. So I did this in the morning and I just hated it. I really hated her face so even though this took me all morning for some reason it took me like a couple of hours, not all morning. I was like, I need to do it all again. And I really had to fight myself to be like, yeah, you have to do it again because I can get really lazy sometimes. And that's something that I've been working on since I was younger, because I know in my past projects in like uni and stuff, I'd be like, yeah, that's good enough and just let it go. And it's something that I started to notice as I was getting older, like I would just be like, Instead of being a perfectionist, I'd be the opposite, like, yep, that's done. And there's a fine line, isn't there, where something, it's perfectionism or it's just plain laziness. And I was like borderline near laziness, so I'm just trying to fix it. But realising in myself that that's what I was doing. So this page, I was like, nope, do it again, because I want this comic to be the best it can be. And even if it takes me a bit more time than I originally thought, then you know what? Screw it, because I want it to be good. So we did it again. And I need to, like, obviously this looks very cheesy, but I'm going, when I colour it, I'm going to, like, smudge her up and stuff. So it's not going to look, like, that cheesy. You see her through the window, basically, but it's like a silhouette of her, so. But I much prefer that face to, to that face, right? This one is fine, but it's not what she looks like. So if you're looking at that and you're like, well, I don't really see the problem, it's just because it doesn't look like the character. It was a bit off model if that makes sense to you guys so yeah um all these boxes are a little bit askew as well and you're probably thinking like that looks a mess but what i'm gonna do is when i scan these i'm gonna just fix stuff up in photoshop so all the little mistakes that you see like here the lines are kind of blurring and there's the spacing is not very good i'm gonna sort all that stuff out in photoshop and you'll see that when i've got to that point which might be soon because this is I'm on page 9 basically of 17 but I'm really thick guys here here it is again I'm thinking of adding two more pages to the end just because of having a little bit of a an epilogue kind of thing I hope I mean an epilogue that would be really embarrassing if I don't mean epilogue and I just think like it would conclude the story a little bit better no I don't know I don't know what to do guys I'm just I just need to figure it out Okay, so today I'm thinking what I'll do is just colour some pages and chat with you guys. This is a page that I did yesterday and I'm very pleased with its outcome. There's a few things that I want to change a little bit but I can do that in Photoshop 
and I really like this the way this bit turned out because yeah, someone's shouting outside, why not? I started to do the storm clouds yesterday and I just hated them. I was like, what have I done? And then I kept going with it, like push through the pain. I want that woman to stop shouting. Who shout talks anyway? Oh wait, I do. Hmm, never mind. Anyway, I pushed through the pain and yeah, I really like the way this turned out. I like the textile graphic look that I get with the Copics and the pencils. I just think they look really nice together and they're visually interesting and they draw the eye and yeah. What do you guys think? I like it. So, so far the colour schemes have changed a little bit but I think that is due to sort of the weather and time passing within the comic but they still have a similar vibe if that makes sense. Obviously this one's very blue and this one's very purple but they still have pops of colour that this one has and they still have similar tones within the pieces and the pencil and stuff kind of brings it all together and you know that these two belong in the set. Yeah, um, okay, so let's get going with the colouring. I was also really, I'm really unsure what, how much to show you because I obviously, I've said this before and I have decided that I want to do a crowdfunding um, thing for this just so I can have enough money to print them out and send them off to people and that would be really cool if I could just get like a tiny bit of money and that would be that would just help me create this and it's really exciting because I've never done that before or I've thought about it so many times I've even I've even made like two projects on Kickstarter and never published them which seems a bit silly but um, the last one was due to like tax reasons because they didn't want to tax me in Gibraltar or whatever so I think I'll have to use a different site to Kickstarter so they ex actually recognize my country but we'll see and I'm not really sure how much to charge for each comic as well I obviously don't want to make them too expensive because I want to I want more people to be able to enjoy it and it's also scary in the fact that this will be a comic that people will read because I've never really had that before. I have people online reading my Slice of Life comic and really enjoying it, but I've never had like a book that people who aren't my friends kind of read completed and done and ready. So that is really exciting and I really hope, hope to God that I can get this Kickstarter funded or crowdfunding project because that's another terrifying thought that I won't manage to do it. But obviously I think I'm going to set the bar very low so, <laughs> so I can actually uh, accomplish it. Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously. And this lorry came up and it was just like reversing and you can probably still hear it but it literally, I've been here waiting 10 minutes like whenever you want, whenever you want to just, you know, leave. Where was I? I don't even know so I'm probably going to repeat myself now but I was talking about the Kickstarter and or a crowdfunding project anyway, I keep calling it Kickstarter because that's kind of synonymous? 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 Okay, it's kind of the word that people use to talk about crowdfunding because I think it's the most famous one, it managed to beat all the other. And you know why I think it's the most famous one? Because it wasn't the first, I don't think, maybe it was, but I think it's just got better UI, better UX, like web design stuff, it just looks better and people trust it more and that is a big deal. If you're going to start a business and you want a website, make it look good, pay for it to look really good and be really easily usable and accessible by multiple people and that will seriously put you on top like I don't understand why people always put like patreon right the UI it means user interface is just terrible on patreon I can't stand it there's so many little things that I'm just like why haven't they fixed that for instance I was updating my description and then I clicked to on the same page I clicked to add a discord to it I added to it and it refreshed the page and I lost all the stuff that I was doing like all the written stuff I'd made so I had to redo it all again I'm just like well, that is a simple just save you know oh, it's so annoying just little things and like the navigation is all screwed up and I would just love to be like oh calm down maybe I should email them and be like please change this 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 because what are you doing what is that okay my patron rant is over and obviously they're doing a good thing helping people reach an audience and receive some money for their creative projects but also they take a lot of um like it's not a lot but they take a small percent of what you earn and they keep it themselves and I honestly don't know if like the website is worth that they're doing well so they don't give a shit that their website is cack a bit. I'm not, I hope we're not putting you off using Patreon because it is good in the sense that you can connect with an audience and they can connect with you and you can do it like that. But there's just small things like you can only upload one image at a time. What's that about? And then you can upload one image that people can see and then the other images people have to download them to 
to look at them, which is so stupid. You're a creative site. Obviously, creative people are gonna be uploading multiple images. Now there's a car. I think that lorry got me in a bad mood, eh? Okay, and I'm calm. I'm also very, very um, appreciative of having Patreon. Obviously, if that website didn't exist, I wouldn't have the money that I get coming in from them and people supporting me which I really appreciate like don't get me wrong at all I super appreciate that and I really like connecting with people on patreon and yeah my Monday video I did a shout out to my patrons and I'm probably gonna do it again now just to like cover all bases and I think I'm gonna do a monthly exclusive video but I'm not really sure what to put in it so maybe I'll do like a private stream or something and but then it would just be like me and one person I think and I think that's you Megaya so <laughs> we could just have a phone call <laughs> funny um, yeah, my patron is is not crazy popular, but it's doing very well for me. I think I'm very pleased with it, and I really, really super duper duper appreciate people um, who who are following me or supporting me, and it just is such a nice feeling. I don't know, there's nothing really compares to it, like getting that email when oh you've got a new supporter. It's just like oh, it's so nice. But then the website pisses me off, so you know swings and roundabouts. I don't know what I was gonna say. The colouring process, I think, is the most enjoyable part. I, for the uh, other one, I kind of went ahead and just coloured it straight. And I haven't done that before. Like, all the other pages, I kind of scanned them and did, like, practice colouring. And I definitely regretted it with this one because I think it could have been done a little bit better. But I like the way that it turned out. And, yeah. So, I think, like, straight ahead colouring is not too bad, really. It kind of works. And I, at the end, I'm going to go over everything. Oh, another thing that I wanted to speak about is pencils that I'm using to draw this. So I have this one, the Early Learning Center one. I think it was like a full big pencil when I started and now the lead inside is so brittle that I can barely use it. I can use it for like two seconds and then it snaps. So I had to bite the bullet and start with this sort of, sort of erasable black one. It's not erasable at all. It's slightly erasable. I got them from Lidl. They're like these coloured pencils from, from Stedler. And I was like, oh, are they like those erasable um, colour arrays? I don't know what brand the colour arrays ones, but you know the ones I mean, like the really nice soft pencils. I thought they were like a cheap alternative to that. And they were, they're okay. They're okay. Like they are a cheap alternative. You get what you pay for, right? So I've been using this black pencil to do the lines and then sort of going over parts with this one to make because this one's more it's darker and it's like thicker and more smudgy and this one's sort of more hard and not as smudgy so I've been using these two pencils and this one was as well a full pencil so I'm kind of worried about what I'm going to do when these run out because I've been going back and like going over lines with this black one to sort of make sure that everything is looking similar but I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet again and just go for like another black pencil it's been seriously hot recently. I, I think it's one of those things where it's just for the next two months, it's gonna be boiling, boiling hot. And I just can't, like it, it drains you. It, you don't even realize like it slowly gets to you and it drains your energy. And it's just, it's been doing that with me and I just feel so tired all the time. And I'm just trying to like keep cool and keep having like cold showers and then getting back to work. So I've been trying to do like long, longer days and I've got um, a few commissions now, which is really great. Oh, if you guys don't know, in my other video, The Squishy Worm, which you probably might not have watched because you're here for the horror. <laughs> I am Steph. I like horror and squishies. Like a bit of a juxtaposition of things to like, but I don't care. Anyway, um, you might not have seen that I opened up my commissions. So if you guys want to commission me, I'm doing like... Mm, about $30 per like a character, like a full character coloured. So just let me know if you want that or if you want something smaller we can discuss prices. Like I can go cheaper or whatever, I don't mind. Um, yeah, so working on commissions as well as like doing my comic is quite fun because that gives me a break away from the comic. Yesterday I was working late on the comic till about eight o'clock at night i know it's bad but i sort of don't really work very well in the morning so i'm just a zombie in the morning so i kind of take it really slow in the morning and then the afternoon evening is my time to shine i'm like bam 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 and then after that i was working on my commission for about an hour and a half 
just getting the sketch down. But it's really fun to just take a step away from the horror comic, like I said. In my squishy video that you probably, I don't know if you watched it, but I got some random squishies and I took them as inspiration for character design and it was really nice to just focus on drawing something else and that's something I need to do more of because I want to do a sketchbook tour soon, like a ha another halfway one. Because I think I'm nearly there because of all this horror stuff, but obviously I don't want it to just be horror stuff that everybody's seen, so I want to do some more, focus more on the sketchbook and do more studies and stuff as well because I think I'm letting that slide a bit, which is wrong. Because I think you should always be learning how to draw stuff because it, it incorporates itself back into your work. So say if you did some life studies, then the way that you draw people would become easier. I think that's why I draw women so much is because when I was in university, we had a lot of life study classes, but they were mostly with women. So I got really used to drawing women and I never, we had like one male model once. I think that really affected the way that I draw. Like I obviously draw women a lot more and more comfortable with it, which is really strange. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been something that's affected my whole postgraduate art situation which is fine because, you know, if you can recognise your weak points in your art and you can dedicate time to it, then you'll learn. If you can recognise in yourself where you're not good enough, and you sit down and you say, okay, fine. I've done this with hands before a few times. I I couldn't, I could draw hands really well. And then I went through a phase of when I was working not drawing for ages and I just lost the knack of drawing hands. So what I did was I would sit down and study, like do pages and pages of hands and study the way other people draw hands. And if I like that way, like try to incorporate it into the way that I draw hands in your own style. And I think I really improved um, I'm drawing handsy, I'm not perfect. They were all striving to be better artists constantly. I'm not saying like, I did that exercise and I was, that's it, I'm a famous artist now, I'm Michelangelo. No, you have to keep going with it and keep striving to be a better artist. And as long as you can see improvement, I think that's a really good thing. And I'm saying that as somebody who totally does that, you know, totally avoids drawing men. With this comic, I was like this guy, look, and I had to keep, stopping myself from drawing him small like her because I realised as well not only is he probably bigger I mean you can have men that are the same size as women but I wanted him to be imposing and I just wasn't doing it I was just automatically drawing him quite small and I realised that she's going to be quite a petite woman anyway so it didn't make any sense I really had to stop myself and think about what I was doing wrong and because of that it looks better so if you are really critical of yourself it does help but yeah so I've always just been not the best not the worst so just got used to working hard and just trying my best and not comparing but it's hard to just be like nope I'm not gonna pair, compare because it's easier said than done right I have quite a lot to get on with and I feel like I'm a little bit behind on the comic because I did take that sort of art blocky break in the middle and now I feel like I need to catch up. I don't know what I should do because I don't know how long this project will last. That's another thing that I need to consider. After this project's done, I don't know what else I'm gonna do. I think I might try and do another comic, but I'm not sure what type. Probably something maybe completely different to horror. I've always had it in my, in my head that I wanna do an autobiographical one about a me as a kid and like my dad in the army and moving around and like things that we faced in that situation that people probably might not be aware of because it's very it's a very specific thing to be an army brat and have that experience of moving your whole world basically at a young age it's a strange phenomenon and like culture shocks and things that affect you i don't know it would be fun to talk about that in art stuff i've always been inspired by craig thompson who wrote blankets and that was his autobiographical book and I thought it was so good and just inspiring and such a good story and it's his life and he just lays it all out on the table type thing like he's just super honest and you guys should check that out if you haven't read it it's like supposed to be one of the best comics ever it is to me as well like I think it's super good so check it out it's super interesting Okay, I think we went on a massive tangent there a little bit and I hope that I have some relatively good footage to show you and not just me rambling on about random stuff and I'm just gonna get on with this really because I hope by on Friday I'll do another live stream maybe because I am actually really enjoying them and chatting to people is quite exciting whilst I'm colouring and answering people's questions is really fun. So I'm, I hope that I can do another one on Friday. I get a bit nervous about them but then as soon as I start them I'm fine. It was really fun. So I, yeah, I'm definitely going to do another one on Friday.
look around for that or like click the bell icon and then you won't miss it at all because you'll get a little notification if that's what you're into and if it won't wake you up at like 5 a.m you let me know what you guys think of this series and i really appreciate all the comments i'm actually up to date on my comments now and replying to you all which is really cool so leave a comment and i'll definitely reply i can say that now guaranteed because i have replied to all of them and i really appreciate everybody supporting me and giving me time and watching my stuff and liking my stuff and it's really cool being monetized now i mean i'm not making you know anything any money but like hardly anything um, but it's really cool it's just nice and and hopefully like the hope is there that maybe I will get some money from YouTube just a little bit so I can keep working on stuff like this and and like I said once I finish this comic maybe I can do the the uh, autobiographical thing which would be quite cool and I've always wanted to do that because I think it, it's an interesting story that certain era of my, of my life it sounds really self-absorbed but I think it is a good story so I want to tell it and yes so thanks for watching guys please like and subscribe for more content and i will see you next time i just want to give a shout out to my top tier patrons for supporting me those guys are cecile james lee and steph megan tom and tim these guys are the real mvps and if you want a shout out at the end of my videos then go check out my patron bye